So let's review where we went so far. We started by looking at test plans. Test plan, of course, is the overall umbrella to gather test suites and test cases for a particular release. And the test plan also lays out the different environment descriptions in which you must test this application. The test case describes one piece of functionality that needs to be tested, and it is implemented by a test script. Now that test script can be an automated script authored in one of the test automation tools, or it can be a manual test script authored directly here in RQM. If it's a manual test script, then you have both keywords and test data to help you implement that particular test script as efficiently as possible. This is the test construction phase, setting up all of the test cases that you need for testing the entire application. If we switch down to the test execution portion of RQM, we're going to start by worrying about all of those environment descriptions. How many different environments do I need to test each of those test cases in? How many variables are there in browsers and OSs that I need to worry about for each test case? And I'm going to generate from those environment descriptions a test case execution record that describes for a test case a particular testing scenario. That functionality must be tested on Windows, Chrome, against a DB2 database. It also must be tested on Firefox, Linux, against an SQL database. I have a whole set of test case execution records for each test case describing how many different times I have to run that test case and keep track of the results. As I run the test execution records, I'm going to build up test case result records, which will give me all the details of how many times I ran the test for that particular environment, and for each time I ran it, which steps failed and which steps passed. Given all of that information in RQM, I have the ability to do a lot of reporting. Here I'm looking at a real simple one. Test artifact states. I want to know for the test cases I'm creating and the test scripts I'm authoring, how many of those test cases have been fully implemented or have been approved, how many are still in the draft phase, we're implementing it, how many are under review, not yet reviewed and approved, or perhaps I want to start running a bunch of execution reports, not on the state of what I'm authoring, but the state of those test cases I have actually run. And you can see I've got a whole series of execution reports here. How much work is complete? How much is left? Uh, which test plans or test cases or execution records have high numbers of failed points? Now, what is my test coverage? down in the lower right corner here. Of the requirements I've built up in my requirement tool, how many of those requirements have test cases implemented for them? In fact, that's a very interesting report that leads us to the last aspect of RQM we're going to cover in this particular talk. It's integrations with the other JAZZ tools. We're looking here at just a simple description of how RQM integrates with DMG, the DOORS Next Generation Requirement Tool. You created a test plan in RQM. That's how I'm going to test release two. Well, that is validating a whole series of requirements that you gathered in DMG for release one or release two. These are all the requirements we're implementing for a release. Those requirements are validated by a test plan. Well, I want to break that down to a more granular level. I want to know for each requirement in that collection what test case in RQM is testing that particular requirement. And that's where I'm going to get my coverage. I've got requirements in DMG that don't yet have an associated test case. 
I have made all the associations. With these three requirements, their test cases have passed. This other set of requirements, they're either in progress or their tests have failed. That's the kind of information I want for my integration. How about between RQM and RTC, the work planning tool? Same thing. I've got a development plan telling me how I'm going to implement release one. I want that linked to my test plan. This is what I'm developing. This is what I'm testing. For everything I'm doing in my release one plan, I want to know what is it I'm working on and what are the test case that is going to tell me whether or not I've implemented that correctly. So from the requirement to the test case, from the work item to the test case, what drove me to create the test case, how is the actual implementation of that effort going. Let's go take a look at some of the pages in RQM that show you these links. And this brings us to our final demo. I'm back in my test plan. You can see here the different test cases that are part of this plan. What made me decide that these were the right set of test cases? Well, I've turned on some additional sections here in the test plan we haven't looked at before. We'll start with Requirement Collections link. This is a link to a collection of requirements in DNG. And I've opened that up in this tab here. These are DNG requirements. And if I want to open one of these up to actually see what the full requirement looks like, we can do that. We're now in DNG looking at the requirement that caused me to generate a particular test case. Okay? So I have my link to this whole collection. I also have development plan link, link to a development plan, which I've brought up in this tab. Here's all of my release one stories. Those that I've already taken on in Sprint 1 are closed. Sprint 2, I'm working on a series of those. And again, I've got individual link from these stories to test cases. Now let's do that. Let's drill down to a test case. This had to be linked to one of the requirements in that collection and linked to one of the stories in the development plan. And I can see that in the sidebar over here, which I've turned on. For this particular test case, it is linked directly to this requirement. I can do a pop-up to take a look at it, or I can click on it and open up the full requirement. And I am linked directly to this particular story for developing the functionality. So you start with the requirement in DNG. You create a test case for that requirement, and you create a story to implement that. And they are all linked together so that you can follow them back and forth. And the very last thing I want to show you, I've switched back to my test plan. I'm looking at the requirement collection link. This is the link to the DNG requirements that are driving my testing effort. I have a reconcile button here. I'm going to click on that, give it a few moments to check things out, and this is showing me the requirements that already have test cases developed for them and requirements that do not have any test cases yet developed for them. Well, I can select those three and say I need to generate test cases for each of those requirements, and I will get a new test case for every single requirement in that requirement collection that does not yet have test coverage. I'll get a whole new set of test cases. They'll be included in this plan automatically. I will generate my standard execution records for them, and I will start developing all of the tests. And that is the last of our demos today.